Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Yo, what's up? It's Dave. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. Today, let's talk about the question, is it worth it? Is it worth it? So a lot of times in the conversations I have with my coaching and consulting clients, with some of the people in my Facebook group, Digital Marketing Mentorship with Dave Campbell, I'll of course put all the links and stuff in the show notes for you. Sometimes I see it in other groups. Sometimes I see it in my inner circle. I, I get this question a lot in a lot of different ways. The question is, is it worth it? And what they're asking is, is this course, is investing in this course and going through it, taking the time to do it, is it worth it? Is buying this software package worth it? Is investing in this tool worth it? And many times, the thing that they want to invest in will help them. It will help them achieve their goals better, faster, quicker, help them, you know, whatever, run faster, jump higher, whatever it is they're trying to do. It, there's no doubt that the, the benefit is there. But the question that people will ask is, is it worth it? And sometimes behind that question is, if I invest in it, can I actually do it, right? So sometimes it's a self-confidence issue, but oftentimes it just comes down to, do you know the value of your time? Do you know what the value of your time is? Do you know what an hour of your time is worth? And I didn't really understand this until I read Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which is probably the most referenced book in this podcast. If you've not gotten a copy and read it, you probably should. I know it has a silly title, seems strange, but it's a really good book. It's foundational. It, it will change the way you think about work and the value of time and how you could probably do things better and faster and, and probably eliminate a lot of stuff that you shouldn't be doing. It's really what it comes down to. So anyway, in that book, there's an exercise where Tim talks about, do you know the value of your time? And he, you know, runs you through an exercise of like what, you know, a lot of people will just say, okay, how much can I get paid an hour? Right. And they'll look at how much they're getting paid their current job and say, okay, that's my hourly worth. But I would suggest to you, and Tim does in the book, that you probably need to put more of that in there because what you're getting paid at a job is not necessarily what you're worth in an hour, right? And and I'm just means by a strict business sense. We're not talking spiritual or other things, right? Like what just what is an hour of like of your time worth? And so you need to factor in a number of things. We're not going to get into a whole bunch of them today. You can check out the book or look at, there's a lot of calculators online. Maybe I'll look up one and put it in the show notes for you, like how to determine what an hour of your time is worth. But until you really know that and understand that, it's hard to answer the question, is this thing worth it? Additionally, as I was having this conversation about uh, conversion AI, this really incredible tool that writes copy for you automatically, it's, it's you won't believe it. I'll, I'll put a link to a demo I did on YouTube in the show notes for you. But in one of the groups, somebody said, hey, is this worth it? And so I answered this dude's question with a couple questions. I said, do you know what an hour of your time is worth? Do you know what your customer acquisition cost is? Do you know how often or what your conversion rate is on your calls to action, right? So three basic questions. If you can't answer those questions, it's hard to know whether or not investing in this tool is worth it because you don't know necessarily if this thing will improve, improve your outcomes, improve your key performance indicators, right? But if you know what an hour of your time is worth and you know how difficult it is for you to write copy and, and you've struggled with it in the past and your conversion rate isn't that great and your customer acquisition cost is super high because you got to do a lot of things to bring people on board, then if you know some of those things, if you know some of those numbers, then you look at the is it worth it question and you go hell yeah it's worth it like oh my gosh like if that saves me one hour of time there's another example uh, i use a, a scheduling app called calendly calendly and i don't know it cost me and i pay for the their pro i guess it's called i pay for that it cost me i don't know 120 dollars a year but here's the deal I can have people schedule time with me, my coaching clients, my inner circle people, people that want to do a, a consultation call, whatever. I send them a link 
and it checks my calendar, it checks their calendar. If they have to pay, right, if it's like an hourly thing and they're gonna pay me an, an hourly rate for it, uh, they can't schedule it until they pay for it. That's all done automatically through Calendly and it's hooked up to Zoom and my payment processor. So if somebody schedules an hour with me, they pay for it, they schedule the time, it goes on my calendar, it goes on their calendar, they'll get reminders because of how I set things up in my calendar, I'll get reminders. The, the payment automatically shows up in my bank account in like 72 hours or something like that. And that's just one, that's just one thing. That's one transaction. That's one person scheduling time on my calendar. $120 a year for that. Do you think it's worth it to me? Is it worth it? The answer to that question is hell yeah. Because think of all the back and forth that goes on with just one, one appointment with somebody. Hey, are you free on Friday at 3? No, I'm not. How about Monday at 2? No, I'm not good Monday at 2. How about Tuesday at 4.30? No, I don't do Tuesdays. Uh, how about Wednesday? No, I'm not good Wednesday. Actually, I'm not good Thursday or Friday either. How about how about the following week, right? And you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. How much time is that taking? And if you were to hire somebody like an assistant or somebody to do it, then there's a cost associated with that. So to me, investing in something like Calendly, totally worth it. Investing in something like Conversion, totally worth it. By the way, you can get like, free word credits and a, and a trial if you go to gamble.com slash conversion you go check that out but and, and that's another way to see is it worth it so if you have trouble writing copy if the stuff that you write is not that great and people aren't opting into your thing if you have a hard time writing persuasively then yeah paying a monthly fee for that thing is probably worth it it'd be like a hell yeah even though i'm okay at copywriting and i do okay with my conversion rate i looked at that thing and i said yeah, it's worth it. Is it worth it? Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world because I know if that helps me convert one more person a month, if that helps me convert one more you know, call to action, if it helps put 10 more people on my email list, and I know that I typically convert you know, of those 10 people, maybe if I convert it 20% on my offers, that's two more paying customers, then yeah, that's most certainly worth it. Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. Same thing comes with all these things and, and tools and uh, websites to build funnels and courses, stuff like that. Somebody in my group yesterday was like, they were basically trying to cobble some things together. And they said, hey, I uploaded some videos and I put them on Vimeo. And I don't know if they you know paid for that or not, but I put them on Vimeo and I thought a password protected them, but I didn't. And so they're basically trying to like cobble together a course experience online, you know, as cheaply as possible. And they're like, but now my videos are all over Google. You can see them everywhere. So essentially their intellectual property is out in the open. And they're like, what am I going to do? And I'm thinking to myself, it might've been worth investing in some of the stuff I talk about, like Kajabi or whatever, but I didn't, you know, we helped and said, Hey, you should probably go in a password, protect them all and then look at some things. But that, that is, those are some of the things you have to think about as you are answering the question, is it worth it? Is it worth it, right? That's more of a business owner mindset. Most people will look at these things, especially if they're new to building a business or side hustle, and they'll say, that's expensive. That costs too much, right? Cost too much relative to what? Is expensive relative to what, right? And sometimes, like early on, I remember having to make a trade-off. Like, well, okay, maybe I need to reduce the number of channels I get on my cable from 500 to like getting basic cable for a few months to pay for this thing because then it will help me generate more revenue in my side hustle and then maybe we could go to more you know watching more channels on cable weren't watching a, a lot you know many of those channels anyway all right so uh, yeah, I had to look at the cable go is it worth it like are we even getting anything out of that not really right and and is it adding value to what it is I'm trying to do so that question is it worth it if you find yourself asking that question is it worth it Right? You, you see infomercials on TV, you see like, one of the things I say as I'm watching these things to help evaluate it as I'm looking at, you know, either infomercial or watching it on a website or a webinar or whatever, I look at it and I go, okay, what if, what if even only half of what they're talking about works for me? You know, what if they said you'll convert, you know, 10 more people and I'm like, could I convert five more people? You'll, you know, you'll be able to increase your vertical jump by six inches. Well, what if I can increase it by three inches? Would that be worth it? Right. And then knowing all the other things I know, like if it's really important to me that I learned to slam dunk a basketball, then being able to jump another three inches is probably worth it. Right. I'd say, hell yeah. 
So I look at that and I go, like, even if, and here's the other thing, in a lot of these cases, in a lot of these decisions, they're not, you know, they're not, uh, what's the word? They're not permanent. A lot of these things you could pay for monthly. You could probably get a two week trial or something. With this conversion thing, you could get up to 10,000 word credits, right? You can try it out and see if it works for you, right? There's, there's things you could try. You could dip your toe in the water. You don't even have to go all in. So you could try it and then you can really let yourself know, like, is it worth it? Even some of these things that you end up paying for, they don't have a trial. They usually have like a 14 day or 30 day money back guarantee. So you go in and you try it and then you go, oh hell, this is awesome. Like I did a similar thing with Calendly, right? When I first got it, I was like, okay, I don't know if I need the pro version. And I did the free version and I played with it for, I don't know, two or three days. And I was like, whoa, this is really good. This is really powerful. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna upgrade to pro. This makes all the sense in the world because I can use those other tools that they have. And now it makes all the sense in the world for me because people show up on time for my appointments. The Zoom meetings are already set in there. They're built in. People just have to click a link. They get a text message reminder. Yeah, it's so worth it. Trello, right? Trello is a free thing that I use for my productivity and managing my projects and my to-dos and stuff like that. Trello is free, but they have a paid thing. And again, that's probably, I don't know, $120 a year, something like that for, for me. And I was always using some of the tools and figuring out how to use some of it. And I looked at, oh wait, here's some of the things you could do with Pro. Hell yeah, it's worth it because if it saves me one hour of my time over the course of a year, which it does save me an hour, probably a day of time of back and forth and sending emails and trying to track things. Like it definitely saves me time. So because I know what an hour of my, my time is worth, I look at that and I go, wait, yeah, that is most certainly worth it. Like th that's a no brainer. Okay. So I, I would encourage you to think about as you were wondering, is it worth it? Is that course worth it? Right. A, a lot of these courses, right? These thousand dollar, two thousand dollar courses, people are like, oh, I don't know if it's worth it. Listen, if you're going on a journey and I said this in previous episodes, but I'm going to say it again because it's a good analogy. If you're going to go on a journey, if you're going to go on a, a trip through the woods, right? Do you want to just go and run full speed into the woods with your head down and run into a tree and knock yourself out? No, but that's probably what a lot of people do. Or would you rather someone give you a map and you look at that map before you go in and there's a couple paths that you could take and maybe depending on the weather and your situation and how many people are in your group, you have to take a different path than maybe what most people do or recommend it. But at least there's a couple options mapped out for you and you can look at the map before you go into the woods, right? you would say, yeah, I, I'll definitely take that map. I would love that map, right? So what I tend to do with these courses and to think about how to do those, I look at people that have had success in the marketplace either themselves or they have proof through some of their students of success in the marketplace or perhaps they're a reporter expert, meaning they maybe it's a new thing, but they have shown how other people in the marketplace have done similar things and they have a framework or whatever. I look at that and I go, is it worth it? And again, a $2,000 course, I go, well, I think about how much it costs and then I say, well, how many hours am I going to have to put into doing it? And I look at it and I go, yeah, it's going to save me X amount of hours this year, or it's going to make me get there faster, or it's going to make me eliminate a few mistakes and missteps so I can get there faster. Hell yeah, it's worth it. Some of those mistakes that you make in business, like, yes, you're going to make some and that's part of it, but trial and error is very expensive, very expensive. Like I would, I have figured out like if somebody's doing something I want to do and they've shown other people how to do it, yeah, I will pay for their expertise. Even if I don't go through their high level coaching or their one-on-one -on -one coaching, but like if they have a $2,000 course or something, I look at that and I go, yeah, it's worth it. Cause again, if it helps me get there faster or convert more customers faster or whatever, you know, again, you have to know some of your numbers, customer acquisition cost, conversion rate, whatever. So I look at something like Stu McLaren, my buddy, Stu McLaren teaches people how to do membership groups. He has something coming up here. Uh, this episode's coming out in April. He has something coming up towards the end of April where he's going to show people how to build recurring revenue membership groups, right? I look at that and I go, okay, let's say, I don't know what it's going to, what the investment's going to be this year. Let's just say for math, it's $2,000, right? I look at that and I go, okay, so if I had to create a membership group to offset the cost of that, how would I do that? What would that look like? How many people a month at how many dollars, right? So let's just do simple math. Let's just say it's 10 people, 20 bucks a month, right? That more than covers your thing because you get 10 people in a recurring revenue membership group paying 20 bucks a month. A lot of you can. You have the skills, talent, and expertise 
to do that. That's not asking a lot. 10 people at $20 for an entire year more than pays for a $2,000 course, right? So that's how I break it down. I look at that. And then for me, because I'm a little further along in business, I started saying, how fast could I double that return on investment? Right? So if it's $2,000, how fast could I turn that into four? So not only get my money back, but also make $2,000. And then with some other things, I started looking at it saying, okay, how could I 10 exit? So if it's $2,000, how fast could I turn that into $20,000, right? And as you get further along and you realize that the value that you add to the marketplace is directly proportional to how much money you can make, right? So as I learn to create more value and add more value to the marketplace and I know I can do it and I've done it before and I have confidence in it, then yeah, a 10X multiple makes sense to me, all right? If you're just getting started though, you, you should probably look at it and go, is it worth it? Well, that's only 10 people at 20 bucks a month. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, I could do it. Because I'll not only have recovered my cost, but also I'll have all the skills that I learned from this thing and the information so that I can avoid a bunch of mistakes and just get it right and get it out there, right? Because one of the things Stu says is um, you don't have to get it right. You just have to get it started, right? A lot of people spend a lot of time trying to get everything perfect, right? Just get it going. And then, as I like to say, build your ship as you sail it, right? Get it out there. And he shows you all those things in his workshop. So you probably want to check that out. I'll, I'll put the link in the comments or show notes for you. It's um, gamble.com slash stew2021. So anyway, as you're thinking about those things, as you're looking at those things, as you're wondering, as you're asking yourself, is it worth it? Then ask yourself a couple other clarifying questions, right? Is it going to save me time? Is it going to help me convert more customers? Is it going to help me get there faster? Is it going to help me leave my corporate job that I hate and grow my side hustle, right? It, if it helps you do that, is it worth it? For a lot of you, you'd say, hell yeah, all right? So instead of asking that question, I don't want to see anybody that listens to this podcast or in my group ask that question publicly anymore, right? Because it's a very easy question to answer yourself now. Is it worth it? Just ask some of those other questions. And if you can say yes to a few of those, then you go, yeah, hell yeah, it's worth it. And you try. And again, it's, it's not permanent. If the thing doesn't work for you after a couple months, after you put some effort in and it doesn't work or it's not the thing you wanted or you don't like the user interface or whatever, okay, then you stop. You're done. You're not paying for it anymore, okay? You don't have to continue buying courses all the time, right? But at some point, you're going to want tools, right? I, I believe to be successful, you have to have mindset, skill set, tool set, right? I help you a lot in this podcast with mindset. I help you in my digital marketing mentorship group with skill set. But there are some people that are much better and will do a deeper dive on some of these specific things, like building a membership group right? That you need that skill set. And so, yeah, it's worth investing in that skill set if that's where you're headed. And then the third one is tool set, right? So skill set, a mindset, skill set, tool set. The last one is tool set. So yeah, you are going to need some tools to make this happen. The most experienced, knowledgeable carpenter in the world is useless if they don't have a saw and a hammer and some nails, right? They need some tools, and as they grow, they probably have more tools, better tools. Like I would, I would imagine that a master carpenter doesn't just have one saw. They probably have 10 different kinds, hand saws, coping saws, band saws, right? Circular saws, table saw, whatever, right? They probably have a lathe at some point. If you're just getting started and it was a woodworker or a carpenter, you probably don't need a lathe, but as you grow, you're going to invest in more stuff, right? So as you think about this stuff, is it worth it? Then you can also look at through my framework of mindset, skill set, tool set. Is it going to help me with my mindset or my skill set or my tool set or multiple of those things? Then yeah, it's probably worth it. Okay. So think about that. When that question comes up, is it worth it? Answer those questions and that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. See you. Thanks for listening to Unleash the Awesome. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag UnleashAwesome.